We're here with Dr. Jane from the World Metaverse Council. How are you today? I'm really great, thank you. Happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about how it's going today and what your mission is being here. Well, it's been going great today and there's so many interesting people talking about new aspects around the metaverse and gaming and DeFi and there's a lot of interesting people to meet. So we're picking up on all the latest new trends and of course, I'm really focused on the World Metaverse Council and we're trying to ad advance the thought leadership around metaverse and we've got a very good group of people globally around over 500 people from 70 countries all working in different working groups to try and bring forth thought leadership on the metaverse. And so can you tell us a little bit about how that's going and maybe some of um, the advancements that you've made so far? Absolutely. Well, we only started uh, really trying to get members this year and we got our first 100 members in a week and now we're up to about 700 from 70 countries. So it's, it's very popular and what we're trying to do is mobilize the members. So we've got a number of different working groups, so on standards and regulation, education, open metaverse, arts and culture, entertainment. We're building an accelerator. So we're really trying to get the global community who are all developing metaverse related activities to help us bring the knowledge to the world about the latest advances, what are the ethical risks, who's building what, where, and how you, for example, I think education in the metaverse is going to be really transformational. So who's doing what and how do you do it and how do you get ideas about that? Definitely. And so what have been some of the challenges so far that you face and also some of the highlights? Well, I, I mean, obviously no one really knows what the metaverse is. So right. just helping people kind of understand the different versions of the metaverse that are being built from what the big techs are doing to what the gamers are doing, to what the Web3 community are doing, to what government's doing and then understand that we're in the early days of the internet. So it's not yet solid what it's going to be, but people are using the AR and the VR and the Web3 and the infrastructure to create these immersive experiences. So Absolutely. people are inventing the future as we speak. So that's exciting. Of course, because you're inventing the future, you don't know what all the risks are. So we're really focused on what are some of the ethical challenges around the metaverse, because we know from Web2, that there are issues with privacy and identity yeah. and safety, and they're going to be exacerbated in Web3 because you're going to have so many more data points that you, you can collect about people. People are going to be in a much more hyper-realistic experience, so it could be confronting for them. We don't know anything about avatars. Do they have human rights? How do we... <laughs> do they? Well, <laughs> exactly. And do they have to follow the laws that exist outside the metaverse, in the metaverse? Is it okay for them to assault you or kill you? And if it's your avatar, are you responsible? So these are really real issues. How do we protect children? How do we know who our children are talking to? So these are all issues um, that we need to prepare for. And that's what we're trying to do is to help, help the community, help governments, help um, industry think about these issues and mitigate them before they become problems. Okay, I see. And so, so what, what are, are some, some of the main use cases of metaverse platforms? Well, there are many, but I mentioned education before because I believe education is ripe for disruption anyway. But I want to use a term from a friend of mine who's working here, which is bricks and mortarless. So you can provide education that doesn't require buildings to anyone all around the world on a 24 hour basis. And anyone literally with a mobile phone connection can now access the metaverse. So that's, that's going to be really uh, incredible and children can learn you can gamify education, you can take them on field trips into the metaverse. There's so many more ways we're going to be able to teach children better, but for the world they're going into, not from the world that their parents existed in. Healthcare is another really important use case, and there are many examples of how metaverse is being used in healthcare, so I think we'll see that. And then there's real estate, entertainment, there's so many uh, use cases being developed. It's really only limited by your imagination, and I, and I think that's what's exciting about it. And we at the council are trying to find these use cases and share them so people can see how our lives can be improved through access to these metaverse experiences. Definitely. And so, so far what I've seen from many platforms, let's say Decentraland or The Sandbox, is maybe like concerts, more entertainment experiences, right? But it's like at a certain time. It's not like I want to be there all day just hanging out. I only go for a very specific or certain event. So what do you think it's going to take for someone to just 
want to spend their days. In well, I don't know that people will want to spend their days in the metaverse, and I don't think that's what we should be looking for. What we should be looking for is how do we give people the experiences they want or solve the problems that they have? Because in all likelihood, they're going to pop in and out of multiple metaverses to do things that they want to do. So I think we really need to focus on the user experience and what the user problems are. And if it's Web3, you have to build huge community support. So any metaverse that's got no community is probably not going to last for right. the long run. Right, I think that's like the pillar of any startup or company in Web3, especially the community and the strength of, of the people in it. And so what, what do you think of the community here in Dubai? And maybe specifically when it comes to metaverse um, initiatives. Well, Dubai, as you know, is a very exciting place. Um, it's exciting for a couple of reasons. One is because everyone who comes to Dubai is here to make their lives better or to achieve something. So there's a real ambition in Dubai, which is exciting. And the government is very pro-tech and pro trying to push the boundaries of the future. So I think that it attracts an incredible number of people, but wonderful diversity because you've got people here from all around the world. So it means when you go and talk to people, you're getting cultural ideas, experiences from all around the world. And I just think that makes it really rich. And there's some fabulous companies here doing interesting things. And everyone who's anyone comes to Dubai now. So we don't have to go to conferences all around the world. We just stay here. There's enough wait for them to come to us. Here but every that's day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And so what are you most excited about in the future? It could be metaverse related, maybe gaming, a project you've heard of recently. Well, look, I think the, the most exciting thing for me is education. I've spoken about it a number of times. I've now been meeting people who can see that the future of education has to be different. 60% of the new jobs won't require a university education. So the universities who think that they're going to continue to run bricks and mortar education teaching the things they've taught forever are going to be superseded by these virtual academies that are going to be teaching people very specific skills-based education that will enable them to get jobs. Because one very disturbing statistic that I want you to think about is now ChatGPT4 has come out, the work of coders is, not, is going to change really significantly. So we're going to have millions of coders who need another job. So we need to use this kind of metaverse, um, bricks and mortarless education to help them prepare for new jobs. And we're going to have to continuously upskill people for new jobs. And we can't wait for the old style curriculum and buildings. We have to be teaching these people now because they will be out of a job. Definitely, no, we have to adapt and quickly, like you said. Well, thank yeah. you so much for your time, Dr. Jane. It's such a pleasure, thank you.